Let's dive into the year 536, known as one of the toughest times for all living beings. What's the deal with that year? Well, in 536, a mysterious dusty fog rolled in, covering Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia. Some historians even think bits of America felt the impact, too. Picture this fog. It's so thick that sunlight struggles to break through. Imagine living in constant darkness for a whopping 18 months. According to Procopius, the Byzantine historian, Byzantine was the Eastern Roman Empire, in case you didn't know. He described it as, the sun shines without light like the moon all year round. So, daytime, but seriously dark, maybe a little glow like the moon even though it's the sun. Now, the effects of this prolonged fog are seriously chilling. First off, the temperature across most of the Earth took a nosedive. National Geographic reports that during the summer, we're talking a mere 1.5 degrees Celsius. And remember, it's summer. That's why 536 got labeled the temperature of the year. It marked the coldest temperature in the past 2300 years, and this temperature drop set off a chain reaction of effects. Think drought, failed crops, and ultimately millions of people starving. With no sun, Science Alert noted that in China, it even snowed during summer. Yeah, you heard it right. Summer, but snowing. Just imagine the chaos of that time. Temperatures dropped. Without the full strength of the sun to heat the oceans, less water would have evaporated and the atmosphere became drier and drier. What's even crazier, even though it went down in 536, that year and a half without the sun is thought to have left a mark all the way up to 640. More than a century-long ripple effect. No need to jump back to 640, though. In 541, just five years after the mysterious fog rolled in, the world got hit by the PES epidemic. Now, what's the fog got to do with this mess? According to the Timeline Channel on World History Documentaries, the plague back then was caused by bacteria, Yersinia pestis, chilling in infected mice. These mice got their blood sucked by fleas, and those fleas, they made their way to humans for a little feast. Yep, you guessed it. Those bacteria hitched a ride, too. The kicker? These fleas thrive and get feistier in cold weather. Connect the dots, and you can see where it's headed. So, according to Timeline, this bubonic plague was originally hanging out in Ethiopia, Africa. Because of the hot African weather, it mostly chilled in coastal areas with little wind. But when the world got a temperature drop in 536, suddenly it became the perfect hangout for these fleas. More infected rats and their fleas multiplied in Africa and eventually set sail to Europe on merchant ships. These ships traveled from all over Africa, making their way to Alexandria in Egypt and then sailed to the heart of the Roman Empire, Constantinople. Now, why did the plague wait until 541 to hit? Blame it on the Romans getting hooked on this thing called elephant ivory. They were importing tons of it to craft all sorts of stuff. Furniture, fancy ornaments that wowed the neighbors. You name it. So, the plague rode into Europe alongside a boatload of elephant ivory. And that's how the PES outbreak got famous as the Justinian Plague, going from 541 to 549. They say it's the first major plague ever. Crazy, right? What's your take? Do you think there's a link between the mysterious fog in 536 and the PS outbreak in 541? Or are these just two totally unrelated gigs? Drop a comment and let me know. The um, uh, European and Mediterranean greed for ivory that brought the roof in. So Europe felt the impact and Africa got a taste too, right? Now let's dig into what went down in Asia. Apart from China getting hit with summer snow, this ripple effect has a sequel in European history. Pre-536, 
the Mongolian turf was ruled by some wild bunch of horse-riding badasses known as the Avars. Ancient Chinese records spill the tea that these Avars were living a seriously uncivilized life. I'm talking barbaric, folks. One crazy example. After chowing down, Avar dudes cleaned their plates by straight up licking them, with the Avar women joining in. But hold up. Remember, this is all from ancient Chinese records, and back then, they saw the Mongols as enemies. Uh, with outrageous habits, the Avars never bathed, never washed their clothing. They cleaned their dishes by having the women lick them dry, uh, all of which was uh, simply horrifying to the Chinese. Whether or not they were really living like that, one thing's for sure. The Avars were badass fighters, especially on horseback. Their riding skills, still kicking it in some countries today, pretty cool, right? But in 536, these Avars took a hit. Cold, dry weather messed them up, thanks to the wild effects of that mysterious fog throwing the world off balance. Cold, okay, that's their turf, but this was a whole new level of chilly and dry. Long story short, their horses took a nosedive, weakened, and died. So what did they do? They hit up the tribes around them, the ones they used to lead. Massacres, enslavement, it was brutal. Some managed to escape, took a wild journey west. We're talking through Russia, Kazakhstan, until they settled in the Balkans, you know, places like Hungary, Serbia, Montenegro, and more. And guess what? Avar's descendants aren't just chilling in the Balkans. They're spread across the countries they bolted through during their escape. And speaking of famous descendants, ever heard of Khabib Nurmagomedov? Yeah, that crazy fighter. Turns out there's a genetic link. Funny twist. These Avars, on their migration route, actually missed Constantinople, back when it was ruled by the Roman Emperor. Rome got hit with a double whammy. Plague and Avar attacks. Talk about tough times. Avars roll up to Constantinople, not to conquer, just looking to snag some gold. Rome's like, hey, take the gold, just don't attack us. Over 50 years, they raked in 7 billion pounds worth of gold from Roman emperors. Now that's just crazy. Avar impact combined uh, with the uh, plague and the economic problems that ensued destabilized the empire. Now, let's shift our focus to the impact in America. There's a belief that this effect left its mark in the remnants of Teotihuacan, an ancient city in Mexico. Dr. Rebecca Story's research, digging into human remains there, reveals some heavy stuff. Bones from the 536 period show that many babies were dealing with serious health issues thanks to nasty bacterial infections. And guess what? It's the same sad story as in other places. The climate disaster in 536 led to drought, no food, no waiter, a real struggle. Starvation kicks in, sanitation goes haywire, and boom, diseases pop up. It's wild. This means the impact was truly global, right? In the case of Tlahinga, we find lots of babies with already infectious reactions indicating that the health of the mothers was so poor that the children are getting sick as well. So we've cracked the case. What caused that eerie fog wreaking havoc on Earth during that dreaded year? Research took us from Antarctic ice to Swiss glaciers and Greenland's tree rings, and guess what we found? A volcanic eruption was the culprit. Now, which volcano, you ask? Well, there are a few versions. Harvard's The Initiative for the Science of the Human Past at Harvard suggests volcanic eruptions in Iceland and El Salvador. They think a mountain in El Salvador, now Lake Ilopango, blew its top. According to this research, these two volcanoes belched out clouds that rode the winds, blanketing Europe and Asia in those mysterious clouds. That's theory one. Now, here comes another one. David Keyes, a researcher, points fingers at the eruption of Krakatoa. He says Mount Krakatoa went big in 535, marking the largest eruption in the past 1300 years. The volcanic ash from Krakatoa spread like wildfire. 
turning into that dense fog that covered nearly the whole world in 536. Wrap your head around this. It erupted in 535, but the major impact hit in 536. Talk about a volcanic time bomb. So what's your take on this? Are you vibing with the first theory blaming the volcanoes in Iceland and Salvador? Or are you leaning towards theory two, pointing fingers at Mount Krakatoa? Maybe you've got your own wild theory. Drop it in the comments. The amount of power generated by this eruption would have been equivalent to around 2,000 million Hiroshima-sized nuclear bombs. Oh. That wraps up our dive into the 536th year, supposedly the worst in human history. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe for more. Catch you later. Bye.